Hi everyone. During the Renaissance, use of invertible or double counterpoint is relatively infrequent when compared with its use in later music eras. This is largely due to the fact that Renaissance composers tend to either write new counterpoint to accompany different thematic entries, or maintain with each thematic entry the same relationship between themes or theme and accompaniment, thereby avoiding the need to invert. In this Osana movement, for example, two themes are used, one which initially ascends by step and the other which initially descends by semitone before returning to the original note. This two theme combination is consistently used with the ascending theme above the theme with semitone descent. The only exception occurs here, where against this ascending theme re-entry in the alto, Palestrina uses free counterpoint. Despite the lack of regular use, invertible counterpoint was known to Renaissance composers and many contemporary theorists such as Nicola Vicentino and Giuseppe Zalino discussed its application. Here for example, Zalino demonstrates invertible counterpoint at the tenth, with the lower part being raised an octave and the upper part lowered a compound third. And here, invertible counterpoint at the twelfth is shown with the lower part being raised an octave and the upper part lowered a fifth. Instances of invertible counterpoint used in actual works can be seen in the following examples, both by Palestrina. Here, initially, the relationship between themes is maintained for the second cantus and alto entry, before Palestrina then uses invertible counterpoint at the octave for these re-entries, with the second cantus's theme being lowered a fourth, and the second alto's theme raised a fifth. This new thematic arrangement is then used again here, before Palestrina abandons these themes and introduces new ones through the remainder of the movement. In the second example, Palestrina uses invertible counterpoint at the twelfth, lowering by a fifth the first alto's initial theme to enter in the second basses and raising the second alto's theme by an octave to begin in the second cantus part.
I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.